Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Outdoors. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. We are just about to take off on our first ever trip in our Class C motorhome. We've been travel trailer owners, we've owned three or four travel trailers, now we've switched to a Class C. So just come along for the ride with us today, the camping trip this weekend, and we're going to tell you our experience. Yes. Cheesy pasta, okay, we have the cheesy pasta, right? Okay. Is this the video? Okay. Yes. Let's get her buckled in. Actually, I like how this table rotates so it has room yes. for the car seat. This yes. U sh the U-shaped dinette is really yeah. nice. I need to put the slide out in still, if you haven't noticed. I am well aware of that. I mean, I'm not bad. You know. And then we'll turn off these lights so I don't have to look at the lights while driving. The problem with an RV, or one of the things you have, is like things rattling around when you drive. That's the biggest difference between the, one of the biggest differences driving a travel trailer versus a motorhome. Light out coming in. Hold on. There she goes. <laughs> oh, they're moving. Final walk around checks complete. We are cleared for takeoff. Runway 25 left. Hey, co captain, how are we doing so far? Good. I'm a little bit nervous. A little bit nervous. I'm really excited though. This is so cool. All right, we've got the backup camera there. I like this Ford, uh, this Ford. It's, it's not bad actually. I will say there's a lot less prep when you just have the RV versus a travel trailer and truck and the hitching and all that kind of stuff. True. This is just a little bit easier to just jump in and go. Well, that's going to happen. Don't give her a toy. I could care less about the toy, but I don't want it to drop it or crack or something. Excitement in the chase, this I know. Yeah, I'm going for the ride, and by myself I am alive, and I saw. Still, I run towards the. Are you happy up there? Yeah. Oh, you're unhappy now. All of a sudden, you have a TV. I'm sad. You're sad. You're Why? Sad. You're scared? Well, you turned off the light. You said you wanted your own bedroom. Wow, that's bright. Do you like the RV, sweetie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, close it. Okay. But is daddy boring? Yeah. No. So we survived the first night of uh, camping in the new RV. That was cool. Um, pretty good, you know, uh, we might switch beds around in terms of who sleeps where, you know, maybe get another like a memory foam for some of these pads. The mattress in the back here, uh, this would be pretty comfortable. It's actually like a nice residential style mattress that you get with the Forest River. Um, the things we have, things we have to do in the RV, you know, when you get a new rig, you make a list, right? You go on a camping trip like this or you camp in your driveway and you make a list of stuff that you're missing. Like for us, it's like, okay, where are we gonna hang the towel? There's no towel rack. Where are you gonna hang the kitchen towels? Where are you gonna put your spice rack? You know, where are you gonna put your computer, your tablets, your um, phone chargers? You know, all the little detail stuff that you kind of have, you know, you take for granted at your house. You don't have that in the RV. So you make a list, putting up like hooks and key rings, uh, storage solutions, storage bins, you know, organizing your closet. Um, those are the things that we have to work on with this rig, but it's really easy stuff. Overall, the, the rig works really well for us. Uh, the bathroom's decent, shower's good size, um, all the components are working good. Um, yeah, you know, this, this rig is only one model year old. It has about 20,000 miles on it, So, but it was in super good condition. That's why I agreed to buy it. Has a lot of storage. It's comfortable for the three of us. For a small family, I think a 25-foot RV is good. So I can give you a quick walk around of the Sunseeker. So this is a 2150 SLE. It also was sold as a Forester. I think they call that a 2151 Forester. Anyway, it's a Forest River product. There's a few things that drew me to this uh, particular unit. Uh, the Asdell sidewall construction, which uh, resists water damage the fiberglass roof, the molded fiberglass front cap. You see how the seams are not on the edges here. So water always drips along these edges. And on older class C's, you get a lot of water damage, water intrusion. 
So having that molded front piece, it not only looks better, um, but it's a lot better for, you know, potential of not having water issues in the future. Um, this is on the E450. I really liked that. This is supposed to be on the 350, actually, if you read the brochure, but I guess they ran out of 350s for a while, so they got the 450. This gives you more towing, more hauling, stronger frame and suspension. It's almost overbuilt for such a small, um, relatively lightweight uh, motorhome. You can see the wheels and tires here. Um, dually rears, of course. I've got some storage in there. Hot water heater. Uh, this is some more storage and your uh, water pumps under a cover in there. Hot water heater. It's a six gallon water heater. Uh, huge storage. One of the other things that we liked about this one is look at the storage. So we can fit, you know, her bicycles, strollers, chairs, grills. I mean, you gotta think about that. You really need to have storage. I really like the Mercedes Sprinter-based RVs because they drive really nice, but they just didn't have much storage. They also had a lot less cargo capacity. This motorhome has a 4,000 pound cargo capacity or payload, which is pretty crazy. Um, but it's nice to have because you have water, you have bikes, you have whatever. You're gonna tow a trailer, that's gonna add to your payload. So anyway, I liked having that. So you've got a ladder that goes up on the roof. You've got a rear window, which is on the corner bed. It does have LED rear lights. You've got your hitch there. It's a 7,500 pound hitch because this is an E450. So you have to consider that. If you get an E350, you're going to get a 5,000 pound hitch. Um, more, this is a pass through storage that goes to the other side. Your wet bay, uh, fuel. Um, this is your slide out. Under there is your propane tank and your generator. It's got a Cummins uh, Onan 4000 generator. Uh, another small storage under here where I've got some stuff. Um, you know, they did a good job packaging this and giving you a lot. Your generator outlets or exhaust is right there. I did the oil change on this right after we bought it. So first thing I did was I changed the oil in the engine. You just crawl under and you can do the oil change in about 20 minutes. 5W30 oil, I use synthetic and uh, oil filter. You can get it in the auto parts store, very easy to work on. I also did the oil change in the generator. That took me about 10 minutes. You pop off a cover and uh, then you I need to lock that. Um, yeah, it was easy to do that. So I recommend, you know, doing really good maintenance when you have an RV like this. But yeah, there she is. She's 24 and a half feet long and she's about 99 inches wide. So they are wide vehicles. You got to be really mindful of that. You guys having a good camping trip? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Princess, you like your new RV? You like your new trailer? Yes? Oh, okay. How about you, Mama? Yes, it's really nice. Yeah, I mean, look how, it's only 24 and a half feet. Look how much room we still have left in this site. I think this is like a 40 foot site. We've got the awning set up. Um, you know, it's, the Class C is easy to use, you know, compared to the trailers we've had. Like the steps are already built in. You don't have to like fold down steps. Um, it's just, there's less setup when you get to camp. All I had to do was back into the site. We got here at night, of course, and then plug in the power cord. And that was it, because I had the water tank full, so I didn't even bother with that. So. And then, yeah, the awning's nice and big. You got to make sure to take care of your awning. Don't leave that out in the wind. Um, but, yeah, overall, it's pretty easy to use. One challenge we have is there's really no counter space because it's such a short kitchen, because the bed is a corner bed. So, like, they give you the flip-up countertop here which helps, but then it kind of blocks the door. So like, where do you put your water? Where do you put your coffee machine? I've got it over here in the, in the bathroom sink. So you get kind of cramped with stuff like that. You figure that out as you go. They did give you some little nightstand shelves there. We're gonna put like more shelves or kind of racks along the edge here, some storage nets to put, you know, just stuff that ends up just cluttering up the RV. Um, and then I like having the heat pump and the furnace because you can use either one. So you have electric heat or gas heat with the furnace. So that's nice, depending if you have hookups or not. Having the U-shaped dinette is great. Um, overall, it's a pretty cool rig, but you can see like we got to do something. We don't have the, like the hooks for the, for the closet. So we got to sort that out. One thing that we kind of like, which is a small thing, but on a travel trail, you typically have the steps that come down that you have to fold out. This has integrated built-in steps. So when you open your door, you just step up into the trailer. There's no, no other work to do. The coach batteries are under here. And then you've got a little like safe here, which you could decide what to put in there. Um, and then inside, of course, I have to go turn on some of the lights. Um, 
in here. But see, we're using a little electric space heater so we're not using up our propane. I always recommend that if you're plugged in at a campsite, use a space heater because you can save your propane. So corner bed, um, the windows, you know, the storage. Um, so far, we do like this layout quite a bit. I think the we just need to organize things a bit better. The kitchen counter space is hard to manage without really having much counter space. You can see here it's kind of already used up. The thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put swivel bases on these front seats so we can swivel these around and use them as part of the living space. Um, that's gonna make a huge improvement, I think. Um, this is surprisingly comfortable up here. I took a nap up here today. I slept there last night, so that's nice to have. Um, how do you guys like the RV experience so far compared to travel trailers? Well, since we have a young daughter, what was good is that yesterday during the maiden voyage of this RV, is that she keeps crying. Oh my god, I want to eat. Oh my god, I want, I want a cheese. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, exactly like this, that I can just walk very slowly, go to the fridge, grab her something to eat. So that was useful because we couldn't do it with a travel trailer and with the travel trailer there are a lot more set up when you get to camp probably you already talked about it right have you yeah no i mean i think i talked about that i don't know i don't remember but yeah pretty much you you pull into I camp mean, i'm not the one doing it but yeah well with a trailer you have like a hitch and you have weight bars and spring bars and you've got connections and you've got all that to deal with with this you kind of just drive in plug in your power maybe your water if you need it we didn't do any leveling because the site's pretty level and there's no stabilizer jacks like on a trailer so you have one less step there to do um because you don't need it because you have such a heavy vehicle yeah there definitely is less setup once you get to camp for sure but the but the downside is now we have no vehicle to go explore we'd have to take this with us i mean how long do you think it would take us to like pack up and go get, leave like 10 minutes maybe Honestly, just put things away, you know. Yeah, um, just put things away. And because it's a trailer, let's say there's something that you forget. Let's say that happened, okay? But because of the fact that you can get up and legally drive up to pick it up, let's say, oh, I just realized I forgot a mug on the countertop or whatever. Yeah, you then, could go back and do it. Right. Yeah, you should be seat belted in, just saying that. Totally, but... totally. But legally, <coughs> you're allowed to. Yeah. Yeah, get up and go do it, which is good. Up here in the driver area, I found driving it that the drive is easy and actually pretty nice. There's tons of power. There's no lumbar support in the seat. So I, I, I got to do something about that just to give my back some support. I also want to change out the radio head unit with like a navigation, like a, one with a screen that I can do like Android Auto and stuff like that just because I'm spoiled by having that from the cars. The camera in the mirror works well. That's fine. There's no side cameras, which is kind of a bummer um, when we're in travel mode we flip this up and flip it up there so it's easier to get in and out of the doghouse area here um but yeah the cab really no big problems there the the ford you know you don't have a lot of leg room because this tunnel kind of intrudes on your leg room but it's all right you get used to it Straight for baby's first KLR. baby's first All right, let's talk about um, one of the major downsides, the most obvious downside of having a motorhome instead of a travel trailer. And that is when you're at camp, you don't have another vehicle, a separate vehicle to go drive and do something. So for instance, if we want to go out to lunch, we want to go out to dinner, we want to go to a hiking trail somewhere, um, assuming you're not towing a vehicle behind your motorhome, which we are not, we could potentially tow our Jeep, but we might do that in the future. But assuming you don't have that, it means picking up camp, putting away stuff in a motorhome, putting the slides in, putting away your coffee maker, cleaning things up, uh, disconnecting, and taking off. Now for us, because we don't have a lot of stuff, um, we could do this in about, you know, honestly about 10 minutes, because it's really just disconnecting the power cord, maybe the water if you're connected to that, um, we just use the water in the tank usually in the water pump to make that easier putting a few things away and taking off we can do that and with a 24 foot rv we can go and park in most places but it's still a little bit big to maneuver and you're going to take up a couple parking spaces right because you're longer and 
wider than a normal car. So there is that limitation. However, the pro to that or the upside of that situation is that when you uh, are traveling around and doing stuff, if you go out for the whole day, you have everything with you. You've got all your clothing, you have your bathing suits, whatever. If you go to the lake, you've got uh, your bathroom with you, your kitchen with you. You've got everything that you brought on a trip with you in the RV. Camping chairs if you want to set up. So there are pros and cons to that. Um, there are two sides to that coin, right? So I think as a traveling or touring vehicle, a motorhome makes a lot of sense. If you're more of a destination camper, you want to go set up a bunch of camping stuff somewhere and really kind of make a base camp, then I don't know that a motorhome is the best choice. Uh, but I think for us, I think the pros right now with how we're traveling uh, outweigh the cons. And psychologically, there's less to overcome, I think. If you just want to do a one or two night weekend trip, with a motorhome, a small class C like this, what we're already finding is that there's not much setup, there's not much takedown. It's a little bit easier to get out the door and, and go and use your unit, especially if you have it parked at your house like we do. So there's always pros and cons, but I think that's one of the biggest things you have to you have to think about. And you know, it's funny in terms of pricing, like we paid about uh, $70,000 uh, for this motorhome as a used motorhome, it's a, and it's a 2023. Um, and for that price, I, I'd be pretty hard, if you wanted to get a nice new, newer truck, like a diesel truck, you'd spend more than that just on the truck alone. Um, and then you'd still have to buy a travel trailer. Of course, you could get a used truck and a used trailer for probably less money, I'm sure. Uh, but again, you have to put that all on the scale and think about think about your needs. Um, and if you buy a truck, you know, then you have that vehicle to do other truck stuff with. With the RV, it's kind of just an RV. You know, you're not really going to be able to use it for other than taking an RV trip. So there's kind of some pros and cons to that. Um, the truth is we'll have to see over this next couple of years how this works out for us. I think it's going to be good. And I think for the trips that I do by myself with the motorcycles and stuff like that, it definitely is better for that because I can put motorcycles in a little uh, trailer behind me or I, you can use the hitch carrier to take one motorcycle with me. And that's a really easy, fast way to do this, to travel. So yeah, those are some pros and cons, but let me know what you think down below. So we're at uh, William Heiss County Park here in San Diego County near Julian. Really beautiful uh, campground. I'm on one of the hiking trails up above camp. Just wanted to take a second to kind of reinforce what I was saying about, um, you know, having a small motorhome, I think, instead of a travel trailer <coughs> or a toy haul or anything like that, or even a bigger motorhome, I think it encourages us to take more spontaneous short trips. Uh, just because it's easy to jump in and go. You know, our friends, this trip wouldn't have happened with the travel trailer that we had because it was too much work for me to get all that ready um, and then tow it and then get to camp and unhook and do all that. Um, but with a motorhome, we can kind of jump in just like you would in a car, get, you know, throw a couple changes of clothes and some groceries and go. Um, so that's what I like about it so far. I think these short weekend trips that get your family out on an adventure, I think that can be a good advantage of the setup that we're going with now. Um, but there's always the pros and cons, but I can tell you for sure, I wouldn't have done this trip with the travel trailer and the truck, just cause it's too much work just for like one night or two night short trip. I wanted to talk a little bit about driving a motorhome. So there's a, a few things that you notice, you know, when you're in a motorhome, you have a wider vehicle. This vehicle is about eight and a half foot wide, around hundred inches wide. And you notice that a lot, trying to keep in the middle of your lane. You're also watching for obstacles on the shoulder, whether it's a rock or a tree branch or, or a, you know, the side of the hill or whatever. So it, it's more stressful to drive because, you know, you're taking up the entire lane and you're trying not to hit any oncoming vehicles, but you're also trying to avoid trees and stuff. Also, it's tall. You know, motorhomes are anywhere between 11 to 13 feet tall and you're not used to that. So you will hear like right now there's this low power line that's making me nervous, right? I'm not going to hit it um, because usually, you know, things like that are not going to be too low, but it's just something that you've got to be aware of your surroundings. If you're in a normal car, you never have to think about these things, but you will scrape branches in a motorhome because, you know, trees sometimes have low branches. Um, I've seen people get caught on things like power lines or overpasses. You've really got to be careful of that. But this rig, because it's under 25 feet, is really not... It's not long, really. It's only about two or three feet longer than a full-size pickup truck. So the length really isn't an issue, but you have the weight of it. So like when you're following traffic, just give yourself a lot of distance between the traffic in front, because if they stop abruptly, you can't stop like a car or a truck. You're 10,000, 12,000 pounds. 
in a vehicle like this and you can't stop like them so you need to you know have a following distance just be conscious of your size and your weight and you drive differently you're also not going to corner as fast right now how about this compared to driving a travel trailer i would say this is a little bit easier because you're not towing you know you're just driving basically a big van uh it's like driving a small u-haul truck or something like that so you don't really have you know we you know with a truck and trailer often you're going to be 50 feet long if you have a normal size travel trailer and truck around that you know i'm only 25 so i think it's a little less stressful than towing uh, because it's a shorter vehicle and, and you know you don't have all that going on um, but you do have the width and the height and the weight that you're that you're aware of the other thing is for driving you know make sure how you pack everything in your cabinets uh, it's going to rattle around so take note of how you pack things use soft containers you know pad things so that you don't hear the pots and pans rattling around secure any loose items because things are going to move around but overall i found driving the motorhome to be pretty easy now if you get a huge motorhome that's going to be a different story but a small class c is pretty easy to drive so we stopped here in a bakery and you can see like this is a normal length parking spot I, I just stick out a little bit but not too much further than those trucks I backed up all the way the fence i do take up two spots because a normal parking spot is not wide enough for an rv so that's something to keep in mind but really it's not too big of an issue to park an rv like this All right, well, we finished the trip. Uh, I got the RV cleaned up, parked, got the tanks dumped out. I have a uh, septic system hookup at my house uh, for the tanks, so it's really convenient. I can just get home and do all my uh, clean my tanks out and everything when I get home instead of having to wait in line at the dump station at the campground. So, anyway, we really enjoyed uh, the Class C so far. We had a good first camping trip, it went really quite smoothly. I like how the RV drives, it's easy to use. I think there's just less setup and less breakdown. There are going to be downsides, of course, and we've talked about some of those if you go with a motorhome versus a travel trailer. Uh, but we're going to continue to blog on our future family travels. We have some big trips planned, some exciting stuff. So you can watch our family grow up, and I think it'll be fun. And I'll give you some RV tips and tricks along the way. So thanks so much for watching. Please be safe out there, and I'll see you on the next video.